Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new year and season of Brewing Live. I am Neha Pathak, your host. Brewing Live is Publicis Sapiens' own technology chat show. 2020 marks a brand new decade and with that there are a lot of conversations happening about you know what are the latest trends in technology. Another topic that's been around for as long as the IT industry itself is skill gap in the technology space. I'm sure all of you have read multiple articles and lots of literature around what is the latest new tech that you need to learn to be future ready. But is skill gap only a tech knowledge gap or a latest tech knowledge gap? Or is there something deeper that needs to be explored by organizations and individuals? To talk about all of this and explore what this real problem statement is, I have with me our EVP and Global Head of Engineering for Publicis Sapien, Mr. Tilak Doda Paneni. Welcome Tilak to the show. Thank you. Thank you Neha. Tilak brings with him over two decades of experience in building large engineering teams across some of the biggest companies in the world. At Publicis Sapient, he acts as a coach as an, and an advisor to our clients on how to look at engineering and building teams to be future ready. Tilak, as I mentioned in my intro, right, uh, skill gaps has been a conversation that's been around for a very long time. What do you think is the real problem statement here? For ages, we've been talking about, hey, we don't have enough in number of you know, people um, in terms of the size of the talent and the type of the skills that talent has. Um, but to me, I think that um, problem has compounded with these new technologies coming in. Um, so to me, it is not, hey, you know, when is this AI going to take off? There are companies that are leveraging it to the maximum they can, to the full extent, mm -hmm. and there are companies that cannot. And to me, the biggest difference is actually the talent. Some of these you know, technologies, uh, let's say you take cloud, right? Um, when you work in cloud, you have to be uh, more self-sufficient. You, know, you don't have any infrastructure teams working with you. So if you're a Java developer, you need to know infrastructure. Right. So that is not just, hey, you know, um, it is just aggravating that the talent issue that we have. Um, if you are working in the AI ML space, you need to know a lot about not just algorithms and you know, core computing, but you need to be very good at data. And also you need to be more agile because people can't give you detailed requirements. So the type of talent that can work on those problems are people who can actually you know, work on very ambiguous problems. So to me, it's just an example of you know, just these two trends, how they um, amplify the problem that we have. Um, so the other, other thing that is also happening because of these technologies is no longer we have multi-year long projects. Right. Right? A lot of the work that we do is small, you know, what exactly we need, so we do a lot of experimentation. So when you had longer projects, you could have teams that are set into hierarchies, um, and teams were working uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a set structure mm -hmm. for a year, two years, three years. Right. In this new hole, they had, that structures don't exist for that long. At the most, you're in a team structure for three months. Um, and they're smaller teams. Yeah, and exactly, and they're much, much smaller teams. Right? So because of that, again, you know, the type of talent we need that works in that is somebody who's more comfortable with more dynamic situations rather than static situations. As I mentioned, you know, the, you know, the, the shortening of the work, the ambiguity that you need to deal with, um, and the ability to not just know one thing, but uh, things around your core skill um, are just amplifying the talent issue that we have. Um, in addition to that is, the, in my view, that is one part of the talent problem. But there is another level of the talent problem, which is the leadership that is driving these teams. Right. Um, do we have you know, engineering leaders who can actually explain to the business or tell the business what is possible right, with these new technologies or you know, new things that are coming in? A big part of why some of these technologies haven't taken off is that. You know, the, the ability of engineering leaders, um, ability to communicate and show the business what is possible. Can these leaders lead, even if we have this talent, can these leaders lead teams of that nature. 
do the teams respect you as a leader? Um, that also becomes an important, you know, in this in this new world. Imagine, um, you know, you are now, you know, trying to lead uh, somebody who's going to leading from a you know local police force to leading a Navy SEAL uh, in a war area. Right? It's it's a very different mindset, right? Because your talent is changing, you need to be a different type of leader. So to me, you know, both those are the big two problems that we have for any of these technologies to take off. But if you look at some of the successful companies that are, um, you know, the digital native companies or, you know, the typical usual suspects like, you know, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, they are where they are not because they, you know, there is something that happened in AI. It's because they have talent that, that can leverage that, that technology. Tilak, can you contextualize this for us? If, if I am a core Java specialist or a full stack developer, what do I need to do different in my day to day to be future ready? Even just a year or two years back, in, in, in most of the engineering world, um, a Java developer used to write code and then somebody used to take it, to deploy and take it to production, et cetera. But with cloud coming in, the expectation is the engineer should be able to do that, or the engineer should be able to do a lot of self-service um, themselves. So now, suddenly, they need to know a little bit about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. right? They suddenly need to know a little bit about how deployments work. Right? So that's just as one example of what is happening if you're a Java developer. Right? If you want to be a you know, leader in engineering, you know, just assume you know, in Java development, in the last five, ten years, typically you would become a leader after four, five, six years. Right? But the need for somebody to hone their skill at the time it takes for somebody to really hone their engineering skills is, in my view, now at least eight to ten years. You need to, you should have seen two to three cycles of uh, landscape changes in your ecosystem before to be a really good leader. So that is. Um, you know, one advice I have. The second thing, um, if you're an engineer in this new world, um, and not just an engineer, somebody who's a leader who's managing teams of engineers, because the cycles are shorter and the teams are smaller, um, you can't have handoffs. Um, the moment you have handoffs before, you know, between different teams, like let's say development team, requirements, testing, deployment, it, your cycles are gone. Your cycles are already too long. Right. Similarly, handoffs between teams in different locations, right? um, you know, you know, you can't be. So you need to have teams that are autonomous and independent as much as possible. How do you uh, get skilled so that you're self-sufficient is important. Um, if you're a good engineer, you also need to be self-sufficient so you can reduce handoffs. And if you're an engineering leader, how you're structuring your team so that the paths of communication and the amount of dependence is reduced. And the type of technology decisions you're making so that those dependencies reduce is also very key. Tilak, as our lead for engineering, you know, how are you and your teams addressing this for our own people and for the industry at large? I'll answer the second part of your question, which is industry at large. A big motivation for me to join Sapient was that um, with what we are trying to do, um, the type of clients and the problems we are solving, we can actually have a bigger influence on how clients are thinking of how they do engineering. Mm -hmm. So to me, I see that as our contribution to the industry. And as the engineering lead, I feel my contribution is we are helping them how to think about, uh, we do get into conversations on how they're thinking about their engineering organization, their practices, and invariably the effect that has on their talent. Yeah. So that you know, is you know, your second part of the question. But on the first one, um, there are multiple things we are doing. Um, people usually talk about, hey, you know, we are training, you know, we are doing you know, coaching, we have classes, et cetera. But one of the big things that we are doing um, is we are purposefully um, structuring how our teams work and how our teams are structured and communicate um, in, in places so that our teams experience um, you know, the, the environment. The second thing we are also doing is, um, obviously, you know, a lot of training and coaching, but we are also making sure that our leadership, senior engineering leadership, is not spread too thin. So they are focusing on um, you know, smaller team so that um, 
the, the teams under them get full attention and through that get as much as coaching as possible. Um, so to me, one purpose of, hey, you know, leaders need to go deep, you know, is not just, um, you know, from their perspective, but also it helps, in my view, actually it helps teams. Outside of uh, these two in the company, what we are also doing is, um, you know, we are looking at how we are bringing junior talent into the company uh, globally to address some of this talent and type of skill issue. Um, we are actually co-opting with colleges. We are actually working with um, the, the academicians in the colleges on how we structure and help them think through um, their syllabus. Um, we are also trying a lot of places, six month long internships. Um, and I actually uh, think you know, the, the work we are doing around internships is, is, is pretty impressive. I think this year, by the end of the year, probably we would have done about 600 internships globally. Um, and that actually is a pretty, in my view, pretty you know, big number. Um, so we are you know, going a step, up, a step beyond, hey, not just you know, internally you know, what we're doing with people, but even addressing um, the talent that is coming in. To wrap up this conversation, Tilak, what is your final advice to software engineers today? Take time to hone your skills. Um, don't get carried away with the latest <laughs> buzzwords. Right. Some of these skills are forcing us or you know, go back to understanding. I mean, if you take AI, you need to know your core fundamentals of computer science and math and algorithms very well. Right? Right. So to me, you know, make sure you hone your skills, take time but also make sure you, know, you, you, know, you practice your fundamentals well. That's the advice I would give to all our engineers. Thank you, Tilak, for this wonderful chat. So you've heard it from the expert himself. Uh, spend that time to hone your skills. Be patient. Don't keep latching on to the latest, hottest tech trend. If you like this chat, feel free to like, subscribe, or comment to our channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to write in the comments section below. With that, this is Neha Patak signing out.